So hello everybody and welcome to 25 days of Dax Fridays edition 2 and we're going to solve for day 11 to day 15 okay I was looking at this star rating and you found it like middle hard so let's figure this out the first question is question 11 and it was the players with the most tournaments played so if we do recap maybe we can actually get rid of at least one of these tables. I think this time we need just one table for all of these things. So if we look at the tables that we have, we have the tournament ID with the team ID and the matches. There's nothing about players here. Standings, nothing about players. Teams, nothing about players. Tournaments, nothing about players. So we need to actually go and grab a players table. So if we go to the code book, you're going to find that there is a table called players. How? convenient. So here it says that this data set contains all the records about the players. So we're going to import that. So go to part query and we're going to duplicate this one. Duplicate. We're going to call it players. And then we're going to... This we don't need. Tournament name we don't need because we have it on the tournament table. The team name we have it on. Is this the players? This is not the players. I didn't change it. Players. Okay, let's do it again. So we have key ID we don't need. This is the player ID. Family name, given name. We need those for the answers. Birth date. Let's change that to date. If it is a goalkeeper, a defender, a midfielder, a forward, Count of tournaments, count of tournaments. So we need to know which player played most tournaments. We have a table that contains players and how many tournaments they played. Mm -hmm. These, I'm going to get rid of them for now. We'll see if we need them later. I always do that. We're getting some error here. So uh, let's see if we can catch them otherwise. So it is in row 111. Let's see, row, row one, one, one. Obviously, I have to go one up. Just a second. Where was it? One, one, one. Not available. Okay, we need to replace that with nose because that is not a date. So that's why it's giving us that error. So there, then it shouldn't be any errors anymore. And we need the count of tournaments to put into whole number, text, text. And we import this table into our model. I don't remember if I have relationships on or not. So we need to check. These are all my tables. Uh, so the relationships are not on. Let's see, we have player ID and we have nothing to link it with so that's fine we don't need to link it with anything but we should definitely put it in our data thing players so there okay so the question was question 11 players with most tournaments played players these are players with most tournaments played. There is a count tournaments. <laughs> I know that some of you did not find these and you were actually counting them, which you can do, but hey, if it's easy, why make conflicts? So here we have them. So in this case, we actually don't need a virtual table. We can just go here and do new measure. Let me show you on a virtual table so you see. So you can use top n directly. So if I use top n one of players and then it has to be count tournaments. So this is going to give us the top one of players count tournaments. You see, they are here. So the only thing that we need to do is just concatenate the names, right? So we go in there. New measure. Q11. Q11. 
concatenate x of a table, which table? The one that we just created. And then we, what do you want to concatenate? We want to concatenate the given name. Sorry. And then we want to have a space. And then we want to have the family name. And then we want to concatenate it with the usual. In case there is more than one player, which we know they, there are. And then we put it in the card. Oh, yeah, we need to sort them, though. We need to, the next parameter should be the sort. We should sort by player's given name. Completely forgot about it. So, and then we have Antonio, Jean-Louis, Jay Lothar, and Raphael. So, that was question 11. Let's go to question 12. Question 12 was, let me change that. Um, let me see, I have them in front of me. It was the player with the most matches played. Player with the most matches played. Now, the only table that we have with players at the moment, it just tells us which players. So we need to go back to our code book and find somewhere where we can link players and matches. And how convenient, there is a player appearances that conveys, that tells you which match played each player per team. So this is the table that we need. Copy. Go back to Power Query. And then we're going to import that table. So we're going to go there, duplicate. At the source, we're going to change players with the appearances. And then we're going to get rid of everything below that. And we're going to get rid of some uh, stuff here. So tournament name, we don't need it. We already have it. Match ID, we don't have it. So we need it. Player. I think it's spelled like that. So match name, we don't need. There's actually a table called matches that we will use later on. Uh, did you see my Python script? <laughs> we have stage name. Get rid of it for now. Group name, nothing. This will come from the match table. Mm, we have a team ID. Can leave it. Team name, no. Don't want it. Match date, we don't need it for now. Uh, team code, don't need it. Home team away, no. Player ID, we need. Family name, no, and given name, no, because we have it on the players table. The shirt number, no, 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 no. Do I have everything? Um, I think I do have everything. Okay, so they have the right type, player appearances, close and applied. So we want to know the players with most matches played, players with most matches played. So let's look at our model. Where is the table? Oh, I'm, I'm on the wrong place. Uh, oh, look, now it found its home. So it's linking team ID with teams, players with players, tournaments with tournaments, fine, that's fine. So now, Again, players with most matches played. Players with most matches played. So if we count the number of matches, count. We can see here that this player and the player is Mr. Lothar has the highest number of uh, matches played, 25 actually. So now we're going to create a table to put everything together. So now it's going to be fairly simple. So if we go here to table, we're going to, should I, yeah, I should have done it from the beginning. Better late than never. Summarized player appearances. And then I want to have the player match ID. No, that's not going to be the count. So I don't know, I want to have the player ID. 
I want to have the player. I don't know if I need the ID actually. The, the player. You guys told me that you can click escape it intelligence in the axis behaving and it actually works. Give a name and then player player I pressed escape name escape <laughs> family name my god and then we escape we're going to count the matches which is going to be oh get out which is going to be the count <laughs> count of player appearances match ID and let's see where we are at. So we have family name, given name, the player and then we have the number of matches. That's exactly what we created with the table. Go to the other way. So 25. So now shift enter. We're going to get to the top one, right? And then here we're going to go to the top one of count matches and it's descending so we don't need to do anything. It will, you know, sort um, the highest. And now that we have this, we go to the answers table, new measure, going to call this Q12, enter, and then we need to concatenate which table, the one that we just created, and we're going to concatenate the players given name with the space, players family name, and then I'm going to concatenate with a comma, and now I'm going to sort them with players given name. Okay, so Q12. And we have Blotter. Okay. Now, question 13. Which was... Um, let me see. The question 13 was the youngest player on a match. Youngest player on a match. So we have on the player appearances, we need to know the dates for the match. And I think we did take it away, but we can always bring it back. You know, I prefer to get rid of everything and bring back as needed. Then I put everything and remove because I never removed. So player appearances, if we go up here, there is a match date. You see it? So we need to get it match date. Let's get rid of it here so it comes back to our table. And then we need to turn it into a date and then close and apply. So let's format this so we can actually read the date. So I'm going to go to player appearances and put the player ID. We need the youngest player that ever played a match. So I'm going to put the match date and then to know how old they were, we need to compare it to the birthday. So birthday, let's put it into a proper format. So, so there we have it. So what we need to do basically is create this table, obviously with given name and family name, and then do these minus these, right? So that should work for us. So how do we do it? We go here and we start summarizing, summarize. Uh, player escape, escape, player appearances. <laughs> oh, player appearances, escape. I don't see anything. Player appearances. Now, we need to have the player appearances ID. I'm not sure if it's needed, but yeah, probably in case the two people will have the same name, which I don't think they do, but just in case. Player, escape, player, given name, or oh, the escape works so well, actually. Player, escape, 
layer family name. That's crazy that you need to do escape. Escape is the theme, people. Escape. So now, I'm going to add the match date in this virtual table. So match date. So we can actually, I like to see what I do. And we're going to have the mean, you need to wrap this on a function to be able to add it. So the mean of match date. So this is going to give us the date. And then I want to have escape. Jesus. And then I want to have another calculation, which is going to be our date of birth. Or, or the differences between date of birth, date of birth and match. So let's write just difference, difference date. And that is going to be, get, get out of here. Okay, so we're going to get date diff, date one. I think date one is the starting date, which in this case is our players. Birth date. I need to add it here because otherwise it won't show. Players, birth date. Jesus. Players, birth date. And then match date. Players. Yes, we, I need to have, obviously, wrap it in something. Match date. So I'm doing the birth date of the player minus the match date. And then I want it in days, because if you do it in years, you're going to find that we're a lot of 17 years old, but there was one that was youngest of all the 17-year-olds. So you need to do it in days. And then you'll have here the birth date, the match date, and the difference, this difference date, that's the one that we want. So we want to sort it ascending to find who the youngest player is, and it looks like it's Norman. So now that we have these, we're going to do top n1, and then we're going to do by diff date. And then we need to sort it ascending. The ascending is the default, right? And here we have young Norman. How cool is that? Um, now that we have our super table, you know what we do, right? So we go to answers, new question. This is question 13. And then we're going to grab concatenate x of what the table we just created and then we're going to make sure that you properly code these, you know, write text and all that stuff. I don't want to bother you with that. So this is player given name and then concatenate with player family name. And then you concatenate it with a comma and a space. And then you sort, remember to sort, player given name. There is only one now, but it could come somebody else later. And there we have dear Norman. How oh, cool. Okay, so now that we've done the hardest part, which is figure out how to actually calculate the, the date of the person when they were playing a match, the rest of the questions are quite easy. So for this, the question 14, I'm going to actually duplicate this page. I'll tell you why in a second. Question 14. The question 14, it was... Yes, the second. So the youngest player on a final. So we need, here we have the youngest player that played a match. Now we need to have the youngest player that played a match where the match was a final. So we can actually reuse the code that we had. Let me show you. So this is the code that we have. Uh, let me go to the table so we actually see the data. So here, Instead of just taking all the matches, we want to calculate the minimum of the match where, calculate, the match was a final. But how do we know that the match was a final? So 
So there are two ways. So we can actually go to match ID. Should we do that? The proper way should be to go to get the information about the matches. Maybe we should do it and then grab it from there because there is actually a table called matches that we're going to need that tells us all about the matches. So, you know, all the metadata about matches. So let's go and grab that. Go up. Duplicate. Source. Matches. And then we're going to get rid of those two. Okay, so these are the matches. And we don't need this one. We don't need the name of the tournament. And then this is information about matches that we definitely do need. And as you can see, group stage, no stage, replay, replay. There's like a ton of stuff. But for now, I'm going to get rid of, check this out, match state. We should have used the match state from this table. Stadium ID. No, not now. No. Home team ID. Maybe home team code. No. no don't need that one. Don't need that one. Don't I guess that that's the team ID. We already have that. The scores for the match we probably will need. Score margin, extra time, penalty shots, blah blah blah. Results. Don't care. Away we in draw. Okay. So these are whole numbers. This is text. These are numbers. That is text. Text. Match date is a date. Um, group stage we have here, which is what we were looking for. Close and apply. So if we go to our table, we need to get, well, let's check the relationships first. Where's our matches? So the matches, question is, should it go the, directly or indirectly? That's a decision that you need to make for me now. Let's make it active. You can always relate to them, so it doesn't really matter. And now with the table, we need to go to matches and get the uh, group stage, group stage name, group name. How was it called? Uh, score stage name. And then calculate where stage matches stage name equal to, I guess, final. And I need to get rid of that. So this is giving me now the players where the matches was a final and then the difference between the days. So this is basically the youngest player on a final. But is it? Because as you can see, match date is blank. So we need to make sure that there is a match date to make sure that this person actually played on a final. Otherwise, this wouldn't have played. So I need to go in here, alter, and then put match date is not blank. So we want that person to have actually played 
on a final. And suddenly we get Giuseppe. So you see the difference? It's just a small, but it's a huge difference. And we should probably filter it also on question 14. Let's revisit that in a second. So let's finish now question 14 first. So question 14 equal to, we need to concatenate. Where are we going to concatenate the two that we just created? And then we need to have given name concatenated with layer name, family name, and then we need to boom, 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 and then we need to sort it by player's given name. And then we're going to put this, and this should be 14, and then we have Giuseppe. Let's go back to 13 for a second, because the match state we can actually here use matches match state and here the minimum will be matches match name date sorry date and we are going to filter the table where match date is not blank in case it happens the same and then we should be good to go This is matches. Oh. So it was the same thing. So obviously we get the same result, but it's a little bit more foolproof. And that means that on player appearances, we actually don't need to have the match date anymore. So we can go here to remove columns and get rid of it because it's a match information. So it shouldn't be there. And get rid of that, close and apply. And you know what you are? doing these type of things, uh, building a model, you're going to find yourself going back and forth, changing the model, oh, I didn't know it was there, that clue. It's actually normal. And when I did this, I actually cheated quite a lot <laughs> and did not build a proper model, but just for the sake of it. And then this is not player appearances, this is matches. And this is matches, match date. And now it lets me do match date? That was weird. Okay. So, okay, now the last one, question 15, sorry, was a little bit uh, messy, but that's life, that's the way, <laughs> that's the way it's done, actually. You go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it is what it is. Okay, the question 15 was the oldest captain, oldest captain. Okay, so think about it. And this is obviously the oldest captain that played on a match. Captain, where do we know if somebody, yeah, this was changed. So where do we know if somebody was a captain? It is on the players, right? It should be on players. I mean, it's a definition for a player if you're a captain. Well, no, 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 no. Hold on, because you are a captain on a match. So is it in here? But it's for a player, so it maybe it's here. Captain, there it is. So get rid of it. So it comes up here, Captain, and then 
it doesn't matter if it's a number or, well, let's put a number. I hear they compress better, so you can put it as a number. Captain? And it was on player appearances. Okay, so now remember, we have a table that this table, let's fix it a little with matches. We have a table and we need to calculate where the um, the matches where a specific player was a captain. So we need to have the filter here. It was player appearances, um, captain equal, we change it to a number, so it should be equal to one. So this will give us the matches where a specific player was a captain. And we need to have the oldest one, so we cannot do ascending, we need to do the sending. And here we have some. So as you can see, we had the code already for the last three questions. We just needed to modify it a little bit. So we go here, new measure, question 15. And we're going to do concatenate x on what table, the one we just created. And then we're going to do players given name. We're going to do players family name. We're going to concatenate it using a comma and we're going to sort it for the given name. And here we have it. Okay, okay, so. What do you think? <laughs> I apologize that I made a little bit of a mess. Obviously, I could go back and edit it, but I think it's quite good that you get a, an idea of what it actually is to model things. You know, you have to go back and forth and you will find columns that you didn't know existed and then you will have to redo your model, redo your measures. It's life. It's, it's normal. <laughs> so I hope you're enjoying the challenge. I am definitely enjoying it. And uh, I will see you again next week with some other Power BI videos. And then we will do question 16 to 20. We're getting closer to the end. So cool. Okay, enjoy your weekend and I'll see you again next week.